Hi. I just decided to go ahead and do a show today on depression. I made some notes actually and sharing some tips of things I've learned to help with that issue. It seems a lot of people lately have been mentioning that they feel depressed. So that's what this video is about and so I am going to share all the tips that I've learned um, over the years. So what exactly is depression? Basically depression and you can say a lot of things about it experts say it's this is that and the other but it all boils down to you didn't get what you want you want something you can't have and so now you feel depressed about it so my first tip on depression is don't use the D word don't ever use the word I'm depressed I've actually never said in my life that I'm depressed. I refuse to use that word. And the reason is, is because when you say you're depressed, you're claiming it as your own feeling. I'm depressed. No, 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 no. What you want to do is narrow down that word to exactly what you're feeling. So some of the things I came up with is you're feeling rejected. You had a relationship or the guy that you wanted left you for another woman or you got a divorce or the woman that you wanted as a boyfriend or let's say at work um, all the co-workers are talking about you behind your back over by the water cooler or your boss ignores you or maybe it's at school um, the kids are teasing you uh, there could be a bully you might not fit in with the in crowd um, in some way you feel rejected and that results in you're not getting what you want. What you want is acceptance. And so now you're just like, I'm depressed, I'm depressed. But you don't wanna say the D word. You wanna say, you know, I'm just feeling really rejected right now. Some other things you're feeling, you're feeling frustrated, angry. You're feeling fear, like fear of, I have bills due, I can't pay my bills. Or what if I lose my job or what if I get this bad grade in school or what if this happens or what if I get in a car accident or if I'm you know out late at night um, this or that negative thing can happen to me you know you just start getting into this fearful feeling then all of a sudden it gets all bottled up and now you feel sad now you feel kind of hopeless and you're not really sure what to do about that so you're actually just feeling fear. Other feelings are loss. Somebody died. You lost somebody that you really loved and you really counted on. It could be your relative. It could be your spouse. It could be your best friend. And now there's this hole in your life of who you're going to talk to. Or, you know, maybe it was your parent and they were nurturing you or helping you and you really loved them and now you don't have them anymore. Or it could be a beloved pet. It's crushing to lose a pet that you love. They're like a child. And so a lot of times you start thinking, oh, you know, I'm depressed, I'm depressed. But really what you're feeling is loss. And that's a different emotion, basically. You could also be feeling bored. You're bored with your job. You're bored with maybe your degree in college. You know, you've, you're on your second year and suddenly you went ahead and decided to study business or accounting and you've decided you hate accounting, you hate business, you hate statistics and you're just like, oh my God, you know, I wish this would end. Or maybe you've gotten married, for example, and you just feel bored. You're like this spouse that I wanted and was so excited about and all of a sudden my life is in this routine and we never go out and this house is just laying on the couch and I have to clean the house and I have all these responsibilities and you know I want excitement and I want to go out and dancing on tables in Mexico and drinking and have fun and get taken out on lavish dates or ride around in limos or you know whatever it could be you're just feeling bored basically or stuck you're feeling kind of stagnated and a lot of times what people have they just feel like maybe they don't want it like you could be married 
and you wish you were single. You're looking on Facebook and everybody looks like they're having so much fun and dating this person and dating that person. And then the people that are single are looking at the married people going, oh, I wish I had spouse, I wish I had kids. Um, you know, there's all these pictures of family gatherings, I wish I had that. Or it could be you have this like amazing job and you're making all this money, but you feel bored and you feel stuck because maybe you didn't get the promotion that you wanted. Maybe you wish you could just take off and go on vacation and, and just have some free time and the company expects you to work 12, 15 hour days and you just feel so like frustrated because you don't get a chance to work out, your health is suffering, your sleep is suffering, you have all this pressure on you. And so there could be an unemployed person who wishes that they had money and they have all this free time but they're not enjoying it because they're like their stomachs in a knot like when am I gonna get a job and how am I gonna pay my bills and I need to buy food and I need to buy gas and pay my car insurance if you even have a car or how am I gonna get to the job interview if all I have is this bicycle I mean think about it like whatever you have or that you're bored and frustrated and angry about somebody else has the opposite and they wish they have what you have. So my next tip on this is the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna practice HALT. It's called H-A-L-T and I've actually added my own letter called with an S, HALTS. I call it HALTS. And what that is is do not make any decision when you're hungry, angry, lonely, tired, HALT. Or sick I've added sick and that includes PMS or anything really halts just take a time out like that is not the time to get on the phone and start calling a bunch of people telling them all your problems that's not the time to yell at your boss at work or a co-worker and say you quit um, that is not the time to decide that you want a divorce and you know I want a divorce <laughs> you don't want to make decisions during hungry angry lonely tired or sick it's like take 24 to 48 hours eat some food really good food drink a lot of water go ahead and rest like sleep 12 15 hours and you know take three two-hour naps if you have to for two days turn off the phone get off the social media don't discuss your problems with you know calling all these different people or writing about it on social media um, making drastic decisions or making financial decisions like don't take your credit card to the mall and go out and spend you know fifty thousand dollars worth of new clothes which some people do or call up an ex-boyfriend or send some text like I want you back <laughs> you know you might be challenged to do some uh, actions that you really shouldn't be taking at that moment like how many of us have gone out and just done something completely stupid you regret because you did not practice halt so that is like my go-to now whenever anything is really upsetting I give myself that you know one to two day time out and just make sure I'm fully rested unless it's an emergency there's a clause if it's an emergency then you have to go ahead and address it like obviously if you just got fired from your job I mean of course you have to go ahead and pack your things and leave but just don't tell off the boss or do something crazy like that like if it's an emergency or you get in a car accident I mean obviously you have to go ahead and deal with it at that moment but that may not be the time to then try to figure out you know if you're not hurt like jump in the car and then go buy a terrible auto loan and get yourself involved in buying some new house or car excuse me so don't make the situation worse get some food get some rest which is like you want to fix the problem when that happens like now 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 like you feel this sense of urgency but don't do it practice halts this is the next tip that's recommended by so many different therapy groups that work with depression you're gonna hate this answer because this is like the worst thing when you are feeling you know the D word and you're feeling upset here's the tip make a gratitude list which is like you don't want to do it it makes you angry to even hear that as advice but that is exactly the advice given by so many groups 
that deal with these issues. Make a gratitude list. No matter how terrible things seem, there's going to be things that you feel grateful for or that you can think of. And sometimes it's like, the sun is shining outside. Um, you know, well, I'm lucky I live over by the beach or this park. Or I'm so happy I'm tall. Or I'm so lucky that, you know, at least I have a car to drive. It may not be my dream car, but at least I have a car. I can wash it up, polish it, make it look as best as it can, and at least I have a car. Or let's see what else. Let's say you don't like your weight. You feel fat. I am grateful that I have good health. There's one right there. I mean, there's people out there that are struggling with cancer, with life-threatening diseases, and all you are is fat. You're an able-bodied person who's in good health, who can start a workout program, go to the gym, get on a, a nutritional program, and you can do something about it. If you don't like your looks, what can you do? You can get a makeover. If you don't like your job, you can start doing so many things. You can either start looking for another job, you can start saving some money, thinking about what do you want to do. You can go get an online career assessment from somebody, a career counseling session. You can get a life coach. You could read some books. I can't even get them on Amazon.com. You know, find your passion in life or things like that. Um, a lot of times they sell used books for like a penny with $3.99 shipping. You can you know get feedback and things like that you can apply to new jobs you can go back to college you can get new job skills I mean there's just so many things that you can do if you have a spouse um, that you're having marriage problems or relationship problems you know you can work on those too you can work on yourself you can read um, relationship books and put together an action plan that at least on your side of the street, what can you do to change yourself to make things better? You know, whatever it is, you cannot rely on the other person to change. You can only change yourself. So what you need to think about is basically yourself. All right, so I just made a quick list of 10 things. like. Aim for 10, and it doesn't matter how basic or superficial they are, because when you're really uh, d the D word, um, you know, sometimes it's hard to think of things, so just think of anything. Okay, here's my list of 10. I'm tall, I have good health, I have a car, I live by the beach, I have really good clients that I really like, I have freedom as an independent contractor. Meaning that I'm not stuck working in an office for like 15 hour days or anything like that. I mean, yes, I don't have a steady paycheck, but the benefit is, is that I can work out of my home office. I can work out in the field. I can take my uh, clients and email, you know, on the go. And I, I work constantly throughout the day. So I have job flexibility. Although, of course, I do have to work between the hours of 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. I have freedom to work remotely, which is fantastic. I have my degree when I was younger. Thank God I got that over with and didn't take that year off from school. Um, I do have a bachelor's in uh, business. Um, let's see. I have reasonable fitness. I, of course, wish I was fitter and look like a fitness model or something like that like super super fit <laughs> but I'm okay fit meaning that I'm not like severely overweight you know I wish I was fitter anyway and of course the most important thing is thank god I don't have any addictions those are the worst um, I have no addiction to alcohol drugs smoking gambling um, sex shopping I say gambling there are so many addictions like thank god I don't have any addictions so anyway that's just a general 10 I mean you can go on there's probably a lot better things I was just like off the top of my head I mean of course there's probably more important things that I'm not 
mentioning right now, but it's just kind of like a quick little list. So anyone can do that. Like anyone has it. Anyone has it. Some things to be grateful for and you at least have time. Like no matter how bad things are, you got a few things that you could write down. Maybe it's that you have great relatives, great friends too. Um, I could have said that as well. You know, people that love you and care about you. You're not all alone. I mean, there's people out there like homeless out by the beach and I, it just breaks my heart. They're like laying out there trying to sleep and the grass is wet and they just have like a little blanket on a piece of cardboard. I mean, that's really, that's something that would be so difficult and challenging not to get depressed about. Like that's really, really a hardship. So anyway, so anyway, that's my little list. So make a list. So my last tip, but not least, is start making an action plan to fix what's broken. No matter what it is, you know, there's something that you can do to go ahead and fix it. You know, if you need a new job, for example, and you're not, you didn't get the promotion that you wanted, what you can do is, you know, you could start looking for another job, you can call up friends that you might have worked with before, you can update your LinkedIn profile, you can check around to see where other former associates are working, um, see where else you might be able to work, send out job resumes, drop them off, just kind of get your feelers out there. You can go out and buy a new suit, you know, to interview in, you can get a makeover, cut your, you know, trim your hair or something, be more professional. You can maybe work harder you know if that would be the answer if you want to stay at the company that you're at or let's say you're a young student and you're let's say you're 12 and how old are what would that be sixth grade seventh grade and you're being picked on in school by bullies that action plan could be i'm gonna sign up for martial arts classes. I'm going to sign up for karate and taekwondo, which by the way, I did. I took karate and taekwondo when I was younger. And, you know, in my life, I moved a lot. I moved like 35 times. I went to night school. So I got hit with a lot of bullies. There's like a bully in every class or school that you go to. And be honest with you, there's always one in work too. You're going to always have like a bully. So, you know, you could, I'm off rambling, but, you know, start to make an action plan. You know, if you feel physically threatened, yeah, you can take some kind of martial arts. You can tell a teacher or tell the principal. Um, if you are getting rejected at work, you know, the best thing to do when you're dealing with rejection of people is just decide you don't care. You don't need those people in your life. If you are getting rejected by your friends, coworkers, or bullies at school, I mean, of course, unless it's physical, you have to do something but if it's just verbal who cares like you don't need those people you don't really need to fit in you don't need them to be your friends go to lunch by yourself you know if some guy or girl rejected you they left you for somebody else just decide you don't care I mean half of the problems that you have if you just decided you know what it's important and I'm gonna take steps to work on this issue or maybe sign up for online dating or sign up for a gym if you're feeling uncomfortable with your fitness level but just also decide that yes it's something I'm working on I'm not quite there yet but I'm gonna be happy where I'm at today on the way to where I'm going and I don't care if these people don't like me or I don't care if this job is boring I don't care if I can't you know pay all my bills you know there there's remedies that you can do to go ahead and start working on these problems and start fixing them and if all you can do is 10 minutes a day then do that 10 minutes sometimes it's as small as if you want to lose weight I'm gonna go also to the grocery store I'm gonna get some healthy food or I'm gonna research it on the internet I'm gonna go ahead and sign up for the gym membership or I'm just gonna get a free YouTube video and I'm gonna do a YouTube video right now in my in my house by myself or you, yeah watching YouTube videos is a great way to get tips like no matter what kind of problem you're having I've noticed there's always a YouTube video like that's my go-to place to look for things or Google on the internet 
Um, if you're having a health issue, you know, you can research the health issue. You can make a doctor's appointment. You can do something about it, like no matter what it is. And if you're feeling lonely and alone, hey, sign up for some groups online on Facebook. You can join special interest groups. Like, let's say you have a dog that's a boxer. You know, maybe there's a Facebook group for people with dogs or pets or I don't know. But, you know, join a ladies book reading club or get a hobby. You know, start taking yoga class. Get a makeover. Get some new clothes, you know, without going crazy, you know, spending money or things like that within reason, of course. Um, if you're feeling lonely or rejected, you know, call up an old friend. Make chance to uh, plans to go meet them for dinner or go to a movie. That's another great thing. Go to a movie by yourself. Go out to eat by yourself. Go to a bar by yourself. You might end up chatting with some people. And so whatever the problem is, I'm just throwing out some examples. So some people have like very, very challenging, severe issues, but everybody has issues. So the bottom line is just whatever tiny little step that you can take, just that little thing, um, just to kind of move forward and start trying to transition out of it, you know, go ahead and take it. So anyway, these are all my tips that I've learned from many, many years in therapy myself counseling groups um, probably I can't even tell you how many hours I, I that I've been I mean it's got to be in the thousands <laughs> so these are like the five simple tips to deal with this issue and problem and so and it's from a, a variety of sources both professional non-professional and just spiritual as well all kind of thrown into one and so the next tip is go help somebody else Instead of focusing on your own problems, there's always somebody who also can be helped. Getting out of your own space and focusing on self-pity, oh poor me, poor me, my life sucks, blah 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 blah. You know, get out and help somebody who really needs help. Do you have a bunch of old clothes? Take them to Goodwill. Or better, go to a homeless person who really needs it, you know give it directly to them because a lot of goodwills charge like 10 11 dollars for a shirt go give a homeless person a, a dollar a couple bucks or if you have you know clean socks or shirts or pants or whatever it is you know give it directly to them linens blankets extra pillows things like that like go be a blessing to somebody else call up a friend do something nice for a friend or a relative that you have and just try to think of ways that you can be of service to somebody else. It could be you make somebody dinner or, I don't know, help them with a the problem. Maybe your friend's having, I don't know, a tax issue and you know how to do taxes really well. And so you, you go over there and you help them organize their paperwork or something like that. You know, it could be, it could be anything really, but just... Get out of focusing on yourself. Um, a lot of experts have said before that this is gonna sound really bad, but it's true. If you have depression, it's almost a form of narcissism where you're focusing on yourself. Me, 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 I, 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 me, 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 I, I, I. All you're thinking about is yourself. I'm not this. I'm not that. I didn't get this. I didn't get that. This person doesn't like me. This person left me. You know, you're focusing on kind of being selfish and self-centered. I know that sounds terrible, but the answer is to do something for other people. Stop focusing on yourself and what you don't have and just be grateful for what you have. So hope that tip helped. I feel kind of bad saying that because sometimes like if you're feeling really down in the dumps, like that's the last thing you want to hear is that you're being selfish and narcissistic, focusing on me, 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 me. But um, it's really true. So you want to get out there and help some other person or even a dog. Take the dog for a walk or play with them, take them to the park or the doggy beach or something. So anyway, hope that tip helped. One of the first things I do too as another tip, and I don't know why this personally makes me feel better, 
is I get everything really clean. It just helps me to feel more in control of the environment, for example. The first thing I do is I go clean my house. I really spend like three, four hours and I clean the house top to bottom. Then I make sure I do all my laundry. I fold it, I put it away. I organize and tidy up the whole house. I go to the car wash, I get that car cleaned inside and out. Um, it makes you feel so good when your car is clean. You know, get your own self cleaned up and groomed well. If you're a woman, you know, shower, shave everything, do your hair, do your makeup. If you're a guy, go get a haircut. You know, if you need to color your hair, manicure, pedicure, and just do everything you can to get everything extremely clean and organized. Take a bunch of old stuff to Goodwill if you have that. And there's just something that makes you feel so good when everything is clean and organized. It gives you a fresh start and a fresh perspective. You then go to the grocery store, fill up your fridge with good healthy food, even prepare a few meals in bulk. And I think that is also a great tip just to help you get control of what you can get control of, which is your environment and yourself. And that will make you feel excellent. Even just when I come home from the car wash and my car is completely clean and vacuumed out and I'm clean and have everything done and well groomed, I just feel fantastic. So do all of these things like that, that can really help you feel better right away. Like that's something you can do immediately to feel better. Another tip is don't compare yourself to other people. To compare is to despair as the saying goes. Focus on what you're really good at. For example, everybody has qualities like on a scale of one to 10 that you're naturally good at. Like maybe you're naturally a six or a seven in, I don't know, cooking. <laughs> I'll just say cooking. But with like a few cooking classes, you could be like a 10, for example, or a nine or a 10. You could be really, really good at cooking. Or let's say there's something you're kind of really not so great at. Maybe you're naturally a two or a three. Uh, for example, like me personally, I am a one when it comes to singing. I can't, I'm the worst singer. I just don't really have that as a natural talent. So you know, it would be like for me, I wouldn't try to go take singing lessons and spend all these hours trying to develop a singing talent that even with 10,000 hours of practice, I'll probably scrape by at a two minus maybe for example. So it's just, everybody has strengths and weaknesses and what you wanna do is figure out what you're really, really good at and just focus on that and develop that. Like if you're naturally really fit, you know, go to the gym, work out. Maybe you're naturally like a bookworm or a nerd, for example, and you're extremely intelligent. You know, maybe you'd want to go back to school for an advanced degree or professional courses and advance yourself in that way or whatever it is. So, you know, you just want to focus on your good qualities and don't really worry about your bad qualities. So for example, like when I went to um, college back getting my bachelor's, I took a business major and I actually should have just majored in psychology or communications because I ended up taking all these math classes I was just really terrible at naturally and through hours of struggle, you know, I just struggled for grades. Whereas if it's something I really love, subjects they just come naturally and you just get an A with a lot less effort so you know that's just really important to don't worry about your weaknesses really really focus on your strengths and that'll really help your self-esteem as well and you want to put into what little time you have into the most benefit um, to go ahead and develop your natural strengths and talents. Sorry, there's like a fire truck driving by. It's getting kind of dark and I'm walking down to get some tacos, so okay. Anyway, I hope this helped somebody out there and just wanted to show the tips. So anyway, thank you so much for watching the video. I really, really appreciate it. It's a really nice day today. I'm getting a breeze and a fan who's like super hot and muggy, but Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.